nervous, my nigga. A little bit. <laughs> when I say these. Good day, good people. This is the Holler the Truth podcast. Brought to you by yours truly, Holler the Truth. Giving you the truth for the future, the present, and the past. But I gotta ask, can you handle it? <laughs> Shout out to Miss Aisha. You know, we got that BSN, Business Strategy Network. Um, BSN for the win. Go grab you one. Got the embroidery. See that saucy ass logo on it and things. I'm hollering the motherfucking truth. What the fuck is up? Back at it again with my special guest, my cuz, my dog Ayo. Who's handling it? Is it Luciano or Fresh today? I don't know. Man, y'all are talking about young niggas bouncing out on their day. <laughs> so what's up with you? Let, it, let the people know where you're from. Um, give a little history on yourself, where you grew up. So, um, introduction, man. Name Doug, man, from San Francisco, California, Hunters Point. You know, um, Bay Area, man. California, man. To Texas, man. To Texas. You know what part of Texas? You know, can't disclose all that, man. Can't Houston disclose area, all that. Houston area. Shout out Houston, Texas. Got you know family out there, man. Uh, I got a lot of family out there from what I know of. I don't know them, but... Shit, me too. Yeah. I got a whole bunch of family. Yeah. From family. So, uh, how was your childhood? Your upbringing? Um, pretty decent. My upbringing was decent. Um, rugged. I had a rough one, but I wouldn't change it. it I'm, as I say decent, I mean like... You nervous, my nigga? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> when I say decent, I mean like it wasn't peaches and cream. It kind of was bad, but it wasn't bad because now look at me. You feel me? No, I mean you still could have had a bad one and turn into the... It made you who you are at this yeah, point. Yeah, it definitely did that. Um... You got any traumatic experiences from your childhood you can think of off top? Like, what's your first go-to traumatic experience as a child? Um, in the group homes, the juvenile home, being a little fuck up. Uh, that's really it, man. But you want to talk a little louder? Group homes, being a little knucklehead, you know, and... um. That's pretty much it, but I feel like that kind of, like, molded me into, man, independency. Of course. Yeah. Um, it's one of, like, my first partners out here besides Streets, rest in peace. That was, like, my first, first partner out here. Mm-hmm. But uh, this the nigga that showed me the ropes through the hood, you feel me? Uh, put me... In the right position to understanding what's going on in San Francisco, uh, how the politics work, where not to go, where not to be, who not to really associate with in certain atmospheres. I'm an all around person. I can, you know, pretty much go anywhere, but my nigga helped me navigate through that. Yo, you're a new kid, right? Yeah. Yo, so what's up, nigga? You cuz of blood. What? Yo, yo, hear me, though. Nigga, do you cuz of blood? Cuz what? Oh, shit. Uh, what set you from, man? You know. Uh, I don't know anything about any sets. I'm from North Carolina. Oh, word? North Carolina. North Carolina. <laughs> That's why that nigga sound like Willie Nelson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, yo, man. You better off just hanging with us, you know? Yeah, man. You see, it's some shit you got to learn if you're gonna make it in the woods. Yeah, man, you might fuck around and say some shit that'll get you shot. Shot? Yeah, man, get yeah. those shot. Guns, bang, bang. He was definitely an intricate part of helping me become a man. We don't necessarily have the same upbringing. Similar things and unsimilar things. Like, Pops is real similar. 
they got some our pops kind of got some similar background mm-hmm. stories um tell them how um how we found out we was family that that's the crazy part I don't remember the story but I remember I do remember like being at Nana house and my folks show up your folks there like how y'all what well, what's going on here how well, we know each other <clears throat> I don't know if 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 you familiar with the bay on this point this Uncle Willie grandson right here. <laughs> you Uncle Willie's son. You Uncle Willie's son. He don't play that shit. You Uncle Willie's son. Willie's bakery. Willie's son. Uh, At the bakery on Crusader, man, on the corner of Crusader. I never knew that Willie was holler grandfather. That was his dad, dad. Yeah, it was my dog, too. Rest in peace. To Rest grandpa. in peace, Uncle Willie. And Willie was in Actually, my mom. his birthday in a couple of days, too. Willie and my grandmother, like first cousins or second cousins, so it's crazy because he grew up in Denver, right? And I'm from out here, so I was like, nigga, how is my dad born out here? Yeah, he used to stay in Patrell Hill and the Towers. I mean, they was little niggas, but yeah, you know, um, but yeah, back to what I was saying. I want to give my niggas flowers because what. We met when I was about 19. Yeah, 19, 20 sure. ish. Yeah. yeah. I was like 19, 20 ish. I was fresh out here. Uh, and yeah, he was an intricate part of me becoming a man. I think I said that already, but you know, I want to reiterate that because he helped, he, he helped a lot. I learned a lot from him. He's a little bit older than me. He come from a different background, but similar to what I grew up around. Um, and yeah, I just want to give you flowers for that. So I appreciate you for helping me develop where I'm at. He's also one of the main reasons I know how to do a lot of the shit I know how to do. Uh, this nigga's a hell of a rapper, hell of an artist. Fuck being a rapper. This nigga's a hell of an artist. He do shit with music that you wouldn't expect. Uh, even just taking his music places. People hear and be like, you know this nigga? Like, you know him, know him? They think he own already. Uh, I don't know why we just never got over the hump. But, you know, niggas was talking about we needed beats. I made beats. Niggas said we need covers. I started making covers. Niggas say we need videos. I know how to do videos. Um, Damn, you did. Yeah. I know how to do I had every all this shit. In the book. Every excuse in the book. You and a couple other niggas. Exactly. I would call y'all out, but y'all gonna get on here. I'm gonna get on y'all's ass too. But yeah, you know, like I said, it was an intricate part in me developing. Uh, I was still out here doing my school shit, but I would hang out where I would hang out and learn what I could from both sides of the uh, book, you know. The inside the book and the outside of the book, the streets, the classroom, the music industry, uh, we just ran it up. And we had a real similar way with people, uh, with both people person, people persons, I guess you would say. We, we fit in any crowd, you know, we, we gonna make everybody else feel uncomfortable before we feel uncomfortable. That's one of my go-to things. If I'm in an elevator with a bunch of people, I'm gonna stand at the front of the elevator and look everybody in their eyes. Y'all gonna be uncomfortable if I'm uncomfortable. So, but, uh, we real good people, people, not too many enemies outside of bullshit and women I always bring that up. I had a situation like that at work. I should bring it up. But I'm going to leave you alone. Because I know she probably going to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so. No, wait, before you continue, I appreciate all that, man. Like I texted you earlier, but I always tell you this anyway. Nigga, appreciate holler for real, man. You was a part of my journey, too. Going downhill, nigga doing good, then going back downhill. You know, it's tough, especially um, 
being in politics and the streets politics in general, not just set, just being a part of the, the bullshit. Nigga had a lot of ups and downs. And you kept me out a lot of shit. There's a lot of nights I could have been outside with the thugs, but where we, where we was at? Recording music. To sun up to sundown. To sun back man, up I'm, shit. I'm talking in a row. Nigga got to go to school. This nigga had to go to school. He got class. I got class in two hours, cuz. Work. And I get off of school. We go to the job. Hook the shit up at the job and... Turn up there. Whoop that trick, get a whoop that. If we had the same enthusiasm with the knowledge we got now, I think, you know, the music thing might have been a little different for us. I th- I just we feel still like, got a chance. But. I feel like we was just all over the place. It wasn't no structure. That's it. Facts. That's, that's the main part. It wasn't no real shit. clear-cut goal in sight. wasn't no... Outline to how we was getting to where we was going and what we was doing. Uh, we knew the right people. We just didn't ask the right questions. Yeah. So ask the right questions. You feel me? A lot of gatekeepers too. You know what I'm saying definitely. You know who you is. It's some gatekeepers out there but, for sure. Especially in the Bay again with politics. Uh, I I definitely feel like um. How could I word this? Because I know motherfuckers like to pick my words apart. Um, I'll just leave it alone. Yeah, we're going to leave that one at the door. So what got you interested in music in general? Um, Probably just being in this. Well, I'm a huge Hot Boy fan. I, was, I grew up on Lil Wayne and Juvenile, all that shit. I really, Master P and them was cool, but that was a little before my time, a little bit. You feel me? Like, they was popping, but I wasn't listening to what they talking about. You feel me? They wasn't bad music. I just wasn't into it. Like, I liked it that them young niggas sagging with big clothes with rollies and shining and shit. I liked it that look like, oh, it's these niggas, man. Right. Especially Lil Wayne, he the youngest. I'm like, oh, nigga, that's me. You feel me? So just that, and then just going through shit, and then my dad listening to DMX and Ice Cube and Sibo, Killer Tay, uh, all that shit. You feel me? So I don't know. I feel like I had a story to tell. Um, I still got a story to tell, but. Shit, I'm just not driven right now. I got other shit going on. Yeah, my real nigga. life shit. A pops, a husband, Definitely. brother. Shout out to wifey, man. Shout out to my kids and the fam. Yeah, that's it, man. So how was that transition? Because, like I said, we got a you know similar history with people. Um, so how was that transition from being the type of nigga you used to be. Raw dog Jamal. <laughs> Raw dog Jamal. You remember the bet? Hmm? Remember the bet? bet? You remember the bet, Mike? All you right. know I remember the bet. Do you remember the bet? I remember the bet. Don't tell me. Damn. Real friendly nigga uh, uh, to, you know, being a husband. Sometimes you just get tired. Like, after doing the same shit over and over, like, that shit get played out. You feel me? And... That's really what it was. And we gonna make this real. Stop, stop, stop. Come on now, why you acting like you don't wanna do it? Ooh. Mm. Then once I seen my girl had my back through all the shit we went through, but we got a history too. Like after all the shit we went through, and we still rocking strong, and she there when I need her and shit. That let me know, like, oh, okay, this must mean something. So, you know, they say love after you don't don't block your blessings. You feel me? Um, she came back around. And I was just like, cause we split up for a minute. We still cool and shit, but we kind of did our own shit. She went to school and shit out of state. Man, when I said that maybe I might move, what happened? 
Man, why you busting up the groove, man? The brothers, the wood, the wood. Look, I just don't think you need to be following the woman. All right, she should get a job and move where you are. Nigga, be a man. I stayed here working, and we just kept communicating, and the love always been there. So, when, shit, when we start rocking back, we just made it official. I don't, this is what we doing. This what I want. This what I want. This what I want. Okay. Compromise. Boom. Pregnancy. Oh, pregnancy. Okay. I'm finna take that next leap. I had to dig in deep and see, do I really want this transition? And I just said, fuck it. The reason you asked Lisa to marry, it sounds nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> I thought y'all was gonna be happy about me having second thoughts. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's about, man. It's, the economy is set up for two people, man. A husband and a wife, you know what I'm saying? Everybody don't have to jump into that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, no, nah, nah, I'm, I'm playing, but I'm serious. Yeah. Like, everything not for everybody. Right. So a lot of people, oh, bro, okay, that's cool, but it got to be right for you. If you're not there mentally, then it's not it's go work. Fact. And I just was there mentally, and I'm, I feel like that's like the best decision I made, bro. Oh, Never thought I'd see the day rolling and get married. <laughs> like, for real, like, love is beautiful, bro. I. That shit's so beautiful and amazing to me, bro. I push that shit. You see, I called you, cause what you doing, man? It's time to wrap right. that shit up. Yeah. Come join the game. Yeah, you, you know, I, you got a couple years on me. I don't think I'm mentally developed to. And that's okay. Make that sacrifice right now. That's okay. I think about it a lot. Uh, I aspire to be in a similar position, but. Right now, I don't know. Nah, man, I just don't see it like, like natural, man. You know, to be with one girl, that just ain't me. Man, you damn right, man. This is what I've been trying to tell Mr. Faithful over here. Yeah, he don't wait, know. wait, wait a minute. What if she the shit, like Janet Jackson fine? But yo, man, it don't matter to me how fine a girl is. Ain't no woman finna put no leash around my neck. Shit, yeah. I can't even button my shirt all the way to the top without getting nervous. <laughs> I've seen a video earlier, though. And I think I really just devalue myself. Like as much as people want to say I'm arrogant and narcissistic and about myself, I think I still have a devalue thing about myself where I don't really, <clears throat> you know, I look for validation elsewhere and I've always been doing that. It's kind of like my last relationship I was yearning for that validation and never got it because I had it before and I had it after. But in between that, I was still looking for that validation from that person and it just never clicked. And that shit traumatized me. Like, I'm still kind of fucked up from that situation. Like, I speak on too much, but... <clears throat> You know, I'm still trying to figure it out. Like I say, therapy is a hell of a thing. Shout out to my therapist. We figuring it out. Um, I'm a, I, I feel like um, can't let that discourage you, though. You feel me? Like, because how could I put that shit? Everything is accordingly. Like, everything. Right. It's a reaction. It's an action. It's a reaction to everything. That shit just, I don't know, just built, it, it, it builds you differently and different. You see how you went through it that way? You went through it through the relationship way. I went through the same shit. I know what you feeling because I went through that same shit in the streets way. You feel me? Right. Not so much, not so much of being accepted, but... Um, fuck! I don't, I don't even know what words to you. Not, to, not being to be accepted, but just to feel a part of something. Yeah, but it's it's like a brand. 
like from a the, the nigga dad was, was who he is growing up in Hunters Point. I'm already validated by that alone. Right. That's Lil Doug. You feel me? It don't matter where you from. Harbor, West Point, Odell, Sunnydale, Lapeview, Trail Hill. That's Lil Doug. So, so I'm already singled out. You feel me? Any of y'all know Jimmy Johnson? Hey, man, you better have an invite walking on this time. Listen up, man. I'm OG Bobby Johnson. Your killer Bobby Johnson? You J Rock Daddy? That's right. So now... Now you got niggas from other sets that dad is the same as my dad. Maybe we might be feuding, maybe we not. Or maybe our dads didn't get along. You feel me? Right. So now a nigga inherited beef. You feel me? So that when I say that validation part shit, now the acceptance is kinda hard. You feel me? He was looking for your own name. You feel because I'm from Harbor. But I got love in West Point. But we know that them know. Right. I got love on Odell. We know them know. I got love on Patrol Hill. You feel me? I'm I'm only saying that because so this for San Francisco people. You feel me? I got love everywhere. And I I feel like the older you get, I'm going to throw you off a little bit. But the, I feel like the older I'm getting, I'm starting to value life a little more. Than I was when I was young because now I got something to live for. You feel me? Uh, two daughters. I, I was a womanizer. I know how to control a female. You feel me? And a lot of females be fucked up because their dads wasn't in their life, just like niggas be fucked up. But surprisingly, look at you. You feel me? Nigga right. educated. Nigga. If you got to get like that, I know you can get like that. Um, but a nigga got drive. You feel me? That's one thing I admire about you. You got a lot of drive. You feel me? That's why sometimes we ain't got to talk all, all the time. Niggas, I probably ain't talked to you for like two years before. But when we got back talking, it the nigga, like it was night. like we yeah. talked yesterday. It's like you spent the night yesterday. You feel me? Facts. So, <clears throat> so, so. I don't know, bro. Life just different. And then I feel like, nigga, the older I get, my mind just be racing. Like right now, I'm talking right here. Nigga, I forgot what we talking about. I'm thinking about some whole other shit. <laughs> it's good. So um, we originally was on marriage. What examples of love did you see? Because I know like me, so I always thought I was raised on love. Yeah. But as I got older... I realized I was raised on survival. Like, yeah. my mom was a young teen mom. She didn't know how to show love. Like, you know, now as a grandparent, she's older and understands a lot more and wiser and shit. But growing up, you know, she's a teenager with a baby. She didn't know. She wasn't sure how to handle that. Like, how to go through that as a kid with a kid. Like, we was a little older when we had our kids. So our mindsets was a little different. But, like I said, my whole life I thought I was raised on love because I felt like my mom showed me love. Um, but, you know, she was doing what she needed to do to get us to where we needed to get. And ultimately, I was raised on survival. So I know with you and your situation, you was raised on a lot of survival. But what examples of love and marriage did you have that, you know kind of triggers you to like, you know what, this is what I'm looking at. Or this is what, like what examples gave you the idea to jump in? I mean, that's like a good ass question because it's so much shit. You feel me? And then a nigga mind, like all the negative shit pop up first because a nigga traumatized. You feel me? I feel like I was raised on love, but I wasn't taught. How to love. How to love. I don't know how to love correctly. I say that all the time. Like, I was never taught how to love a woman because my mom always played the masculine role. Like I seen my mom, <clears throat> I seen a masculine version of femininity. So when I started dealing with women that were hyper feminine, I didn't know how to, like, I wasn't understanding of that. Even with a fucking communication and social and behavioral science degrees, I still was dumbfounded to the whole idea of femininity. It don't make sense. 
and it's not supposed to make sense. Mm-hmm. But that's when you know that logic of a man kicks in, and you know you tap into that, and you navigate around it so that she can get an understanding of her emotions in the moment and feelings and shit. You know, we operate different with emotions and feelings. Uh, being raised by my mom, I do act on some emotions and some feelings, but for the most part, I try to think logically on shit. Like just like even stupid shit, like street shit, you know, yeah, I might got my strap on me, but in the moment, I'm very good at processing like, cause I love watching my son play basketball. Yeah. Hell nah. It ain't really even worth it. Nah. Um, <clears throat> just in little situations though, you know, this shit, we in California, it's a lot of people out here, it's a lot of ignorant motherfuckers, and shit happens. No, the impact is heavy. That You see the impact, how you say, I love watching my son play basketball. Nigga, one mistake, nigga, it's over. Right. I'm going to be looking at pictures, you feel can't me? even get videos of it. That shit got me emotional. I was but, thinking about that shit the other day, and I was like, Damn, good. Like, but that shit, that shit can, not to cut you off, that shit can turn your son into a monster. You feel me? Right. My dad was, you feel me? That can flip him. So, impact, if, man, that shit deep. But, I don't know. Um, Who's on examples of love? I feel like I was around a lot of love. You feel me? Yeah, no, you got a big, knit, oh. your family real close and tight. Yeah. Immediate family. But. And then, <clears throat> just the neighborhood. I mean, you got some good family. It's always some good families in the projects. You feel me? Facts. Um, I, I got a good heart at the end of the day. Like, I got a good heart. So, I feel like I go off of energy. And I, it's always been like that from day one. When, as a little kid, I can tell who was a nigga friend and who was a little slimy nigga. And I feel like. I, I just know how to love who love me, you feel me? And some motherfuckers kind of wiggled through the cracks and got got in good. But we didn't weeded that out, you know what I'm talking about? Then motherfuckers gone. And that's what bring me back to wifey. And I ain't throwing no shades. I ain't mad at no niggas, no bitches, no nothing. I, just, I did everything for me. This is what I wanted. I, everything I wanted... Everything I pictured, I brought it to life. You feel me? Some of it. Probably one of the biggest things. Like, nigga, I wanted to get married. I got married. We bought a house. I wanted a house. We got a house. Um, I wanted my girl way back from a long time ago. I ended up getting her. Um, Daddy's little girl, one of my favorite movies. I said I wanted three girls. Don't come up in here like you know us. Oh goodness. <laughs> I'm Lauren, and these are my sisters, Sierra and China. Why you mean my daddy? I really want a son. <clears throat> I'll be cool with another daughter if later. All my partners got daughters. That's what I'm saying. Hey, you janky, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but but look, <clears throat> I feel like um Damn, all my niggas got daughters. It's crazy. Shout out to girl dads. Yeah, so, girl dads go crazy. Feel me? And I, I just feel like... I don't think I'm built for it. <laughs> the teenage years. Nah, you... You got to just give the game. I mean, you got a son, so you got to... You just give a game. I got to... I'm kind of scared of them conversations. My daughter going to be 12. I'm kind of be... I'm, I don't know how to come at her. Man, you definitely need to start having them conversations. But I, no, I'll tell her. Because you think about where you was at 12. Exactly. You're right. <clears throat> I remember but telling my mom at 12. That's like a little sex. conversation that's kind of scary for me. Because I don't know how to approach it. Right. I'm a, I'm a little blunt. My mind might scare my daughter. I tell this nigga shit. You feel me? Uh Cause I don't know how to finesse that onto my kid. Yeah. One thing my mom did was, you know, like I said, we was she was a young mom, but she always allowed that door to be open as a friend as well. Yeah. She made sure I didn't have to hide shit from her. I mean, of course, as a kid, you hide shit, um, but serious shit like sex, she. 
had a talk with me early. It had to be been 11 or 12 because I remember at 12 telling her I was ready to have sex. And I got a whole bunch of lectures from family and whatnot. I lost it at 13, but at 12, I was, I felt like I was ready. I almost did, but I got nervous and we backed out of it. But, uh, you know, just allowing that door open to be her friend as well. You, you play just as much as I play, so... She see the fun dad, uh, but you know, you do gotta have them serious talks with her. Even at the fun shit in there, the funny shit, but she gotta understand that this shit is serious, yeah. you know, uh, <clears throat> with the jokey, jokey, and it's serious out here, and it's really getting worse, especially for like, just all the shit that could happen, like all the shit that could go wrong is getting worse and more wrong but I think the early stages like jumping into this ship early is kind of I think that we traumatized from that too we was experiencing sex early you feel me like young niggas I would have this debate that you know once a woman starts a period it's kind of like you feel me but um, I want to teach my son like I guess my way of going about it is going to be like you know the girls always want the nigga that ain't giving it up uh, in high school I know some niggas that just wasn't they was afraid of sex because they was afraid to be a dad and you know all the girls was on them like oh what I'm going to take his virginity and da 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 and you know they weren't having it but that made them love it the most they, they was after them for show. Sure. And I was one of them niggas running around the school jumping in anything I could jump in. And, you know, I was bragging about it and that didn't fare too well. Uh, I missed out on some opportunities of probably some good women that I could have had and grew and had this high school love thing with. Or that childhood love, puppy love, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Uh, <clears throat> fuck, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Um, I f- Did you go to prom? No. Nope. I was yeah. at work. I mean, no, nah, I'm at... I was at work. As a kid. Oh, God. I was at work on prom night. Like, I miss all that. Yeah. Like, I heard now and then, I seen it on Facebook. I deleted all my Instagram shit for a little minute just to get a piece of mine. But I got with the old folks on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And I'm ready to delete their ass. <laughs> I always had these thoughts in my head, but I've been looking for an outlet, and I finally found one. Joe Carmichael is killing it on Facebook. <laughs> all right, all right. Dad. But I seen that they don't take the the prom pictures no more. Like you Who? know the, the schools, you know the oh, prom the school, pictures. But that, I mean, everybody got these extravagant ass proms now, and that's cool. But up that's like the, voices and that's the culture. You yeah. gotta take the picture with the. You feel me? I yeah. never got to do it. I don't even so. think I even wanted to do it. Shit. There was a couple reasons I didn't go to prom, and I just decided to go to work. Um, but yeah, mm. speaking of work, that's why I hate this shit. I've been working since I was fucking 15. That, that's, that's 20 years, why, nigga, and I don't got nothing to show for well, it. You do got something to show for it, nigga. That, that's why you can communicate, and that's why you're... Uh, that's why your communication skills is the way they are because you used to dealing with people of all you know what I'm shapes, saying? sizes, colors, races, ethnic backgrounds, genders, and sexual orientations and things. You feel me? I like I can communicate. I know I, I'm very um, social, but you a little more social than me. Like you, you articulate with your shit. You know what I'm saying? I say you feel me a lot. I've been trolling niggas so long with that shit that it's a part of my vocab. You You feel feel me? me. I say that so much. I was watching one of my podcasts I did, and I said that shit so many times in like a span of five minutes. I was disgusted. I ought to delete that shit, but, you know, this is raw and authentic. Man, I've been trying to kick cussing, cussing out, but I can't. Nigga is part of. Yeah. It's a couple things I want to kick out. 
I'm calling my daughter that nigga though. I'm like, my bad. <laughs> yeah, I got a bad habit of doing that with the with the boy. Uh I wanna be able to talk to him kinder. I think I just be so frustrated. But I feel like that's raw and you know. In on one hand, I feel like he would respect me for not hiding who I am in front of him. And on the other hand, I might be feeding into some childhood traumas he might be looking into later in life. Like, oh, my dad called me a nigga. I must be a nigga. Well, we're going to dig deeper in what the word really mean, and it's N-E-G-U-S. I ain't going to get into all that right now, but for him, we're going to dig deeper into some of the shit that I feed into him. Because I had a conversation with him once and told him, like, there's a bunch of shit that I'm teaching you now that you're going to have to unlearn. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm going to reiterate that a few more times as he's getting older and older so that way he'll understand that it's some unprogramming he's going to need to do. How I was raised and my experiences aren't going to be his experiences, but I'm only operating on the shit that I've been through, the traumas I have, the joyful moments I have. Like I'm operating on that just like the shit we do. I never got to do none of this shit with my dad that I know of. Like baseball games, football games, basketball games, no, going to his basketball games. I, 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 I love that because I see you do that a lot with your son. I'll be like, damn, that nigga's been to more games than me. <laughs> Not yeah. for calling him a nigga, I'm saying. Yeah. I see it like this. Hockey games, baseball games, basketball games, football. I'll be like, that bro doing this shit. Out of state, in state, but you talk to Holla, he in San Francisco, next day this nigga in Tampa Bay, you know what I'm saying? Um, <clears throat> you going crazy though, you doing your thing as a dad. Uh, yeah, especially for a nigga that didn't have one per se. Yeah, I kind of snuck in, you kind of snuck that in. I remember when Ty was... I got pictures with him and shit with the rollie on and shit. Trying to take my rollie off and shit. Yeah, I, got, I sent you the videos. Mm-hmm. You got him. He was a little bald headed. Yeah, you was bald headed. <laughs> little baby, you know what I'm saying? But I love kids, man. Um, well, I used to love kids. I'm sorry. I love my kids. I love. I got love for other kids. But, uh, yeah, I don't really like kids no more. I don't really like kids um, no more. You still gunning for one more? You shooting for uh, the boy? <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. Like, if I can control it, if I can go spend all that money, like, give me my son. Yeah, but. Just to be trying and. Nah. Up with three that shit, little mamas. Having a kid is fun, stressful. You know why you be having daughters? You too deep. You got to back out a little bit. You can't put it all in there. Okay. You, you got you to gotta give them out a portion of it. That's where the boys know. swim longer, girls swim faster. Yeah. So boys swim longer. So if you back out a little bit, the boy going to swim longer. But if you all up in there, the girl swim faster. So she man, can... I don't know what this man talking about. <laughs> man. <laughs> it's a theory I heard. This nigga be on YouTube. <laughs> YouTube University. But yeah, man. Um, Let me see what time it is. It's not that time. So, advice to your younger self. What would you tell your younger self? If you was here and you got to talk to yourself before you got here. You was going to follow the same path in life regardless. But you was going to tell yourself something then that you know now. Um, I probably, um, I would have took school a little more serious. Just educate myself in everything, though. You feel me? Um, of course, school can't teach you everything. Right. The experience do, but I feel like. I should be further than I am, but it's a journey, not a destination. You know what I'm saying? 
that's why I'm, you just took the words out of my mouth. I, I, nigga, I might shouldn't be where I'm at now, nigga. All the shit I done been in collage with. Um, I don't know, man. I just feel like I tell myself, take it more serious, man. Take life more serious. Because That's crazy. That was literally the quote in my head. Well, take take life. life more serious. You got yeah. to. Matter of fact, that needs to be a um, good title. Title. Mm -hmm. I feel like, like I said earlier, before I get up out of here, I, gotta, um, I had to come push up on cuz. Yeah, I appreciate you for that. Always. I'm going to support you, you whenever, yeah. man. I got to give you your flowers, man. Biggest so. supporters. I actually did my first show with you. That's actually how I met my son's mom. Mm -hmm. That first show. Remember? So this is a crazy story. It was like cosmic, like we was bound to, you know, have this child and figure it out. But I met her in school. I had to drop the class because me and my friends was celebrating our 21st birthday in Vegas. And the teacher said if I missed whatever was during that time, I was going to fail the class because I couldn't make it up. So boom, drop the class. I see her one day. I invited her to our show. Seen her at Auntie April's. Shout out to Auntie April what? Cafe Envy. Shout out Auntie. What show? Auntie April's birthday party with DJ My Emotion. I that? remember that a little bit. But... Yeah. So then I gave her the flyer, told her to come. The day of the show, me and this nigga go to Burlington's, get some little fits. This is back in the times. You know, we dress a little bit. I mean, I don't, but he dressed a little bit outside of Burlington's now. But. We go to Burlington's, her and her sister there. The same day, we have to show. I remember that. And I'm like, oh, come through. We exchange numbers. We locked in. As soon as we got off the escalator at the top. I remember that, yeah. bro. We was downtown. No, we was at the Daily City one. That was for a different show. That was at Santa Clara show. But no, yeah, we was at the... Is that Daily City? It's the Daily City one, right? No, nigga. Yeah, we was at Daily City. Her sister had an afro or something. Yeah, we was at the one by the fucking... Uh, yeah, Daily City. Right off the freeway. We was. Yeah. That ain't Daily City. That, yeah, it is. Yeah, kinda. it is Daily City. You talking about Westlake. Daily City, nigga. Nigga, that's Westlake. But yeah, and we've been locked in ever since. Me and her. Uh, we was locked in before that. But yeah. I remember that. That's crazy. Yeah. Damn. I was like, that's cosmic how that shit just happened. Oh, 20 years ago. She's sumo 14. That I've been around 20, since 14. I sumo's 14. Oh, I'm finna say that. Ties, bro. That, that's what I'm saying. Well, he'll be 20. 15, so that was 13 years ago. He was two when I met him. So almost 20. I'm, uh, seven years, years ago. ago. Sheesh. Eight years ago. But yeah. Damn, um, that's so crazy. So I've known you for over a decade. It's crazy because I was talking to Zenaida and I didn't realize like I've been knowing you for over ten years. Shit, I just told somebody the other day. Um, man, I've been living in well when I was, I've been living in Shoreview long as I've been living on Harbor Road. Like growing up, I got fifteen years on Harbor. Went to a group home for five years. Sheesh. Came home. I had the spot on Harbor still. My mom gave me the spot, but she had the spot in Shoreview. Family needed the spot to stay. I let them have the spot on Harbor. I transitioned to Shoreview. But I've been going to Shoreview all my life because my brother, Christopher and Joseph, shout out my little brothers. So I'm a Harbor nigga, but I'm a Shoreview nigga too. You feel me? Right. So it's crazy. Like I'm a Denver nigga. I'm a San Francisco nigga too. Yeah. So it's shit kind of crazy, but like I've been, but I'm a Hunters Point nigga overall. You know what I'm, I'm a Harbor Road nigga overall, but I'm a Hunters Point nigga overall. You know Two. Harbor Road. Big block. Harbor Road is located right in the middle of the hill in Hunters Point. As far as I remember growing up, Harbor Road has always been definitely one of the top dangerous 
neighborhoods in San Francisco. Yeah, like I said, man, appreciate you. I want to give you flowers for showing up. Uh, like yeah. I said, I probably wasn't in the best energy to do this shit, but I'm glad you pulled up and brought me out of that. Because like I say, the best version of you is on the other side of discipline. So um, I had to do this shit. I had to be disciplined enough to do it yes. and get myself out of the emotion. On the nose, you good with yeah, this shit, bro. I got this. <laughs> uh, I appreciate you, man. I wanted to be a part of this. Uh, I wish we could have got a little deeper. We got, yeah, we got further we, episodes. We though. really, this how me and this him operate, stop. though. We freestyle. Everything we do is just like freestyle. It's not, never planned. I never forget that song you and Rain did on some freestyle shit that everybody's bitch or girl or whatever y'all was saying but that shit was so dope to me like the song just, it's not man. just like That's the song of the songs but it was just dope to see that shit just come together as fast as it did and how it did and how it sounded like it sounded good as fuck and it's hella catchy even peace and one the same thing oh yeah I don't oh, yeah, even we like was in that the studio. Song. That's what just, I'm saying. Y'all yeah, was making the beats the beat, together. Yeah, Shout out, Lil start Reese. Writing it. Yep. Lil Shout Reese. out to my brother, Lil Reese. You know what I'm saying? He coming through. Probably get in for July. Um, we gonna figure it out. But yeah, mm -hmm. appreciate but, you again, my nigga. Always, it's always man. love. I'm here for you. You here for me, and we know it. It's like that. This is the Holler the Truth podcast, brought to you by yours truly. Holler the Truth, giving you the truth for the future, the present, and the past. But I gotta ask. Can you handle it?